the uh, book Question and Doctrine by Leroy Edwin Fromm. And let us specifically reflect on his question number 17 of Question and Doctrine book by Leroy Edwin Fromm. Our Father in heaven, have mercy upon all of us. May we try to understand what happened to the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is 1957 question on doctrine, the original published work by the General Conference Secretary Leroy Edwin Fromm, 1957. In question number 17, he asked, uh, or, or he wrote a question, specifically addressing Walter Martin. Do Seventh-day Adventists believe that Saturday is the only valid criterion for determining full obedience to the law of God? Or can one worship sincerely on Sunday? but fail to keep the Sabbath and still be counted a faithful and obedient Christian? The question is flawed and it's skewed towards answering for, for a generalization. Listen to the thought of this question. Only valid criterion I would say it definitely yes, but Leroy Edwin Fromm would say no, two from One is if they seek the truth and they will read the Bible for themselves, then that is a revelation and will compel the reader to make a choice or decision to follow, obey God's law or not. But for the other prong, which is when people just follow the uh, church and not study for themselves, and if the church declares that they will worship on Sunday and everybody follows, and because they do not read the Bible and do not study for themselves, that should have been the question. Will they be saved? So the question should either be those who read the scriptures and they were taught and they reject or accept it, then that is going to be the only valid criterion for determining full obedience to the law of God. Yet this question that we are being um, subjected to is skewed towards making a making a statement that will offend those who are clinging to Sunday because they are sincere, earnest followers of the church. So the accusation that they are disobe disobeying is rather offensive and, 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 not, and not seemingly correct. So again, let me just clarify to you what I'm trying to uh, point out in this question. As I've said, this question is flawed and the question is inserting doubt. The question is not complete. Are those Sunday keepers, do they did they read the Bible, the Ten Commandments, Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, and then they rejected or they followed their their leaders, their church leaders, then I would say, yes, that will be a criterion because they rejected the, uh, the truth of the word of God plainly. But if, they, but if they are ignorant, deliberately not wanting to accept the Sabbath as binding, then that is another story. So Leroy Edwin Fromm endeavored to generalize so that to avoid being antagonistic and offensive. He wrote, Seventh-day Adventists cannot and do not read hearts. That is true. But we can read behavior. 
we can know whether a person rejected or accepted. This, the, the matter is not about being not able to know the information. The Bible has been there for, has been with us for, for a long time. The problem is relying on what the church is teaching, not what the Bible is teaching. So this is where Leroy Edwin Fromm is trying to, to answer his own question so that it will not antagonize the Seventh-day Adventist to the Trinitarian Sunday-keeping churches. Of course, this is a statement of, of, of defense. Of, of course, this statement should not offend. We believe in advancing light. What does he mean? He means probably that uh, Sunday keepers will read the Sabbath truth and they will be converted. But that has not been the case it, up to his time, 1957. Remember 1844 when the, when the pioneers were disappointed and decided to, to study their Bibles. They proclaimed the Sabbath. They proclaimed the sanctuary. This is 1957, friends. This is what we call, it's been more than a century of preaching the Sabbath, yet people either ridicule, scoff, or mock. Even Walter Martin, who is well-read, a scholar, reject the Sabbath. So why is it that, that Leroy Edwin Fromm cannot attack straight? He has to go somewhere else in order for for him not to be offending i would straightly say i would if this is the question that the trinitarian sunday keepers would ask me i would i would just clearly say we have our bibles we have a responsibility and obligation to read our bibles and to believe what the bible teaches us plain and and pure word of god the problem is if we believe the church, then the church will be the, the authority rather than the Bible. So the when you read the Bible, and if everybody reads the Bible, including Walter Martin and and the uh, and the uh, Leroy Edwin Fromm, the author, then this question should be straight on. Yes, the Ten Commandments is the only valid criterion for determining full obedience to the law in both in spirit. And in the letter. Because how could you clearly, how could you say that you that you are good if you know that Sunday is not the Sabbath? How could you say that you're obedient when the when the Ten Commandments says, remember the Sabbath, the seventh day of the week? You can count it in the days of the week when you are justifying and rationalizing your keeping of the first day. You see what I'm trying to say? They fail to keep the Sabbath because they deliberately don't want to obey the law of God because they are justifying that it is for the Jews only. That if they are, when they read the Ten Commandments, ah, oh, this has already been changed. So how can that be obedience when you have justified that it has been changed, it's only for the Jews, we are in the New Covenant, we are in New Dispensation, meaning to say you do not want just that commandment, the Fourth Commandment. You do not want to follow that because you are comfortable with the church teaching of Sunday, which even if you know that that's the first day of the week. <laughs> so my point being is, yes, you will not be faithful to the word and you will not be an obedient Christian. Simple. But Leroy Edwin Fromm uses Ellen G. White and the other and, and her writings to say, oh, you know, the truth is progressive, advancing light. It could increase... It has been a hundred years since the Seventh-day Adventists had been called by God. Still, people are waiting for, for them to be converted to Sabbath. That will be impossible. So Leroy Edwin Fromm is playing the devil's advocate in the Seventh-day Adventist church. He is lawyering for the Trinitarian Sunday keepers in order for them not to hate the Seventh-day Adventists. Not to label the seventh day as cult, but was he was he uh, successful? No, he was not successful. He was not successful because of his uh, sugar coating the straight message. 
He was not successful then, even until his death. It's not successful because what happens? The Seventh Day Adventist is still plagued with uh, so many that have uh, come out and so many that had attacked it as a cult. Even though Leroy Edwin Fromm tried to water down the straight message. In uh, what do you call this? In his subsequent uh, explanation, he he tries to avoid pointing to the papacy as the man of sin. He is using the words, he is not using a straight, a straight identification, so to speak. Leroy Edwin from at this onset, uh, he would like to be part of the of the worldwide council of churches. We know that for a fact. And so let us go to here in page 184 as we try to um, try to understand why he wrote this book and this book has been device, dev uh, the divisive in the seventh because this book is rigged and skewed towards Trinitarian Sunday keeping. It seems to be that that is the case. And and trying to sugarcoat the distinctiveness of the seventh day Adventist and trying to an, trying to put anesthesia to the truth so that the truth will not be crying loudly. So, so in page 184 here, let me read to you this statement. To your inquiry then as to whether, speaking to Walter Martin, a Trinitarian Sunday keeper, to your inquiry then as to whether Mrs. White maintained that all those who do not see and observe the seventh day as the, as the Sabbath now have the mark of the beast, the answer is definitely no. Those who reject the Sabbath, even though they were given light, are considered fallen daughters of Babylon, the fallen churches. They had received the message, they have heard the message, they did not receive it, they rejected it. They justified and rationalized and accused the uh, church of being a cult or being from the devil. Furthermore, the Reverend from wrote, we hold the firm conviction that millions of devout, devout Christians of all faiths throughout all past centuries, as well as those today who are sincerely trusting in Christ, their Savior for salvation, and are following him according to their best life, are unqu unquestionably saved. How did he know that they did not, they that they followed their the Bible in their best light. This is a vague statement. It's like those who believe the Bible, those who believe Jesus, whether they are they keep the Sunday or keep the Sabbath, they are all going to be saved. What's the difference? There's no difference because he swept it under one rug, unquestionably saved. Now, there are those who are truly, that is, they have not seen or they have not heard the truth. But there are those who heard the truth, rejected it. What will that be? What will they? So, of course, that is not that is not mentioned here. It's just a sweeping statement. And so, if you are really studying the Word of God by yourself and you're convicted, you will be hated by the Trinitarians of the Roman Empire during that time. You will be murdered. Of course, that is what happened in the Dark Ages. If you do not conform to the power of the papacy, you are going to be declared heretic and then you will be wiped out. So this sweeping statement by Leroy Duin from to appease uh, Walter Martin is unbecoming. He could have just written it in a way that will be clear that those who, who read their Bibles, who read the message and rejected the message of the Sabbath, then they their obedience is going to be questioned. But those who have no way of reading the Bible, no way of understanding, no way of receiving them, yet they live godly lives according to the best light they receive, then maybe, and God will be the one to judge. But the Sabbath truth has been abrogated by the papacy. It was intentionally destroyed. It was intentionally uh, breached. It was intentionally trampled down. That's why um, the way the way Leroy Edwin from uh, addressed this is to water down so that it will be 
unoffensive and anesthesia, put anesthesia to the dying person's words. Thousands of such went to the stake as martyrs for Christ and for their faith. There's no question. And thousands of those who read their Bibles and became martyrs for their faith were non-Trinitarians in the Dark Ages. They rejected Rome's authority. Moreover, untold numbers of godly Roman Catholics will, will surely be included. What does, what does he mean here? Godly Roman Catholics? Are you sure? They may be sincere and earnest if they rejected the Bible and the Word of God and rely on the priest and rely on the man of sin, the papacy. I doubt their godliness because they had seen those who had been martyred. They had seen those who had also witnessed and preached. In fact, they, they hated those who preach the truth. Isn't that what Jesus warned us? That you will be hated because of Jesus. Now Leroy and Vinfrom go back to that sweeping statement. God reads the heart and deals with intent and the understanding. It seems like it's up to God, but they will be saved. Those who rejected the Sabbath, they will be saved. Those who did not understand the Sabbath, they will be saved. Those who killed the martyrs, the, those who killed the Arians, they will be saved. Godly Roman Catholics will surely be included. Yes, I believe there are godly Roman Catholics. But if this godly Roman Catholics did not accept the truth upon reading the word of God, then I doubt their godliness. It does not come from the word of God. It comes from a disguise or false god. So it could be... It could be surmised that Leroy Edwin Fromm would like to have would like to appear to some as the best uh, arbitrator of salvation, but he is not. Only God, of course. The Roman Catholic Church for one thousand two hundred sixty years had persecuted those who would like to witness against the Trinity and Sunday. Their voices were silent. So how could they be godly when they, like the Pharisees of old, shouted, crucify him, crucified him? I doubt. I'm just giving my insight. So he further, the last portion, the last paragraph of this page, Seventh-day Adventists interpret the prophecies relating to the beast and the reception of his work as something that will come into sharp focus just before the return of our Lord in glory. Okay, the uh, relating to the beast, the Roman Catholic Church and the reception of his work, the enforcement of Sunday and Trinity, that will come into sharp focus before the return of our Lord in glory, meaning that will be in the future. It is our understanding that this will then become a worldwide test. Let us compare the uh, statement of fundamental principles, the declaration by written by James White. Um, Fundamental Principles, 1872, the original statement of uh, truth by the original pioneers, compared to how James White is addressing this um, issue. They declared, the Seventh-day Adventist pioneers declared, then God's moral requirements are the same upon all men in all dispensation that these are summarily contained in the commandments spoken by Jehovah from Sinai, engraven tables of stone and deposited in the ark, which was in consequence called the Ark of the Covenant or Testament, Numbers 10, 33, Hebrews 9, 4, etc. That this law is immutable, perpetual, being a transcript of the tables deposited in the ark in the true sanctuary and high, which is also for the same reason called the Ark of God's Testament. For under, under the sounding of the seventh trumpet, we are told that the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen his temple, the Ark of His Testament. Very straight, very clear. It's not like Leroy had been from all oh, the godly Roman Catholics will be saved as well. They will be included. Those who died, even though they keep Sunday, they eat pork, uh, like Martin Luther, they will, they will be saved. Of course, we have statements that uh, 
that uh, spirit prophecy says that uh, their best light was, but they were reforming the church. They were witnessing. They they read the Bible and accepted the best truth that they have. Question: Are those Roman Catholics who participated in in the um, Inquisitions are those godly? Are those people who rejected the Sabbath are those godly? Could they could they be accountable for what they have done? Of course, they will be accountable. But Leroy Van from sweepingly said. Oh, they will be included among the same. As though no one will be lost. In the 1,260 years of, of papal supremacy, midnight for the Christian world, lives were lost. As though the, it did not happen, according to Leroy Van Fromm's putting it. They will be included in salvation. How did, how did he know? What is his criterion? What is his basis? That the fourth commandment of this law requires that we devote the, the seventh day of which we commonly call Sarah to abstinence from our labor, the performance of sacred and religious duty. And this is the only weekly Sabbath known to the Bible, being the day that was set apart, being paradise was lost. As you read the Bible, you will not be, you will not be deceived. It's very plain. It's it just have to connect the dots. I should say connect it by going to the truth, the calendar, the dictionary, the encyclopedias that are pointing to the validity of what the Bible is teaching as plain and pure. So these these are the statements of the pioneers. And statement number 13, very clear here, very straight, sharp. That as a man of sin, which Leroy Edwin from never never used. The papacy, James White, at least has the balls or the courage to use it, has thought to change times and laws. That is very, that is very clear. And look at what, look at what the pioneers wrote. Ellen G. White was with her husband during this time, and they were together in one house. And I do believe they prayed together when they read this, and together they, they understood. And I don't think Ellen G. White would change her mind on this fundamental principle. Listen to the straight message, comparing it with Leroy Van Frome. The papacy, man of sin, has misled almost all Christendom in regard to the fourth commandment. We find a prophecy of a reform in this respect to be wrought among believers just before the coming of Christ. During the time, it was them. They preached the Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. So what is Leroy Van Frome trying to say? Oh, you know, this... People who have been keeping Sunday, they will also be saved because they are godly. What about those who, who heard the message but rejected it? Heard the Sabbath message but rejected it. Are they considered obedient? Of course not. So that is, I'm going to highlight because Leroy Edwin Fromm did not mention that in Questions and Doctrine. He's trying to be so nice as a gentleman to Walter Martin and to the rest of those Sunday-keeping Trinitarian believers. So comparing this today with James White, I would say that James White was clear, sharp, straight, and definitely grounded in the Word of God. While Leroy Edwin Fromm is ambiguous, and his being ambiguous leads to doubt, doubting the distinctive and the peculiarities of our teaching. That's my point. Leroy Edwin from Endeavor to make it appear that the Seventh-day Adventist is one with the Trinitarian Sunday-keeping churches except for the Sabbath. And remember, 1957, he started to introduce and wrote Godhead slash Trinity. God-man, referring to Jesus. God the Son, he did not, he did not please uh, use Ellen G. White for that. Ellen G. White never wrote God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, or Trinity in her writings. It's always the Son of God and the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit. Friends, Leroy Edwin from endeavored to reshape the thoughts of those unsuspecting and those who are not studying the truth and those who had not understood the teachings of the pioneers. That's my point in this in this exercise, in this um, presentation. And I hope 
you will understand that there's a big difference between what happened in 1957 and what happened in 1872. 1872 was the clear cut, straight message of the seventh day to the world. Whereas 1957 introduces the Trojan horse of Trinity, not yet voted, but already giving us the idea that our church is being wrestled to return to Trinity. May God our Father continue to enlighten you and bless you and His only begotten divine Son encourage you